iPhone 13 mini, pro and max are here, but the iPhone 12, 12 mini, 11 and SE have stuck around for another year. So should you invest in the latest and greatest or should you save some cash on the previous generation. I'm Renee Ritchie. Thanks to Ting for sponsoring. Hit that subscribe button. It's free and it helps promote quality videos like this, the 2021 iPhone Buyer's Guide. An iPhone 13 will cost you the exact same amount of money as an iPhone 12 did just last year. Only now you get more for that money, including double the starting storage, 128 gigabytes for 830 bucks, 256 gigabytes for 930 and 512 gigabytes for 1130. If size really doesn't matter to you, but the upfront price does, you can get the mini, identical in every way except for wireless charging speeds because mini, but $100 less for every storage tier. If you wanna go pro and get all those extra pro features, you're looking at almost 300 bucks more. I have a whole entire iPhone 13 versus pro video up if you want all the details, but the gist is 128 gigabytes for $1,000, 256 gigabytes for 1100, 512 for 1300, and a whopping one terabyte for an equally whopping 1500. Now, if size really does matter or money is just no object, you can get the iPhone 13 Pro Max, also identical in almost every other way, but $100 more for every storage tier. And if any, all of that is just way too much to spend on an iPhone, you can get last year's flagship, the iPhone 12, at this year's $100 price drop, or 64 gigabytes for 730, 128 gigabytes for 780, or 256 gigabytes for 880. But Honestly, a hundred bucks less for half the starting storage or 50 bucks less for the same storage, unless you stream and cloud store all the things or absolutely don't have an extra dollar to spend on an iPhone at all over the course of the next entire year. If you're considering the iPhone 12, the iPhone 13 will be just a much better longer term investment for you at this point. Ditto the iPhone 12 mini, still $100 less for every storage tier, but still the much lower starting tier and smaller differences between the other tiers. Plus the iPhone 13 mini just destroys it, annihilates it on battery life. More on that in a minute. If even the iPhone 12 is too rich for your blood, you can get the two years ago flagship, the iPhone 11, at a $200 price drop, but only 64 gigabytes for 500 or 128 gigabytes for 550. There's no mini for that model, but it might actually be a sweet spot if you want the modern design and don't care, maybe you don't even like OLED displays or 5G, which I'll also get to in a minute. And then, then there's the iPhone SE too. Classic, not modern design, good old fashioned home button with touch ID and $400 for 64 gigabytes or 450 for 128. But that's just what Apple's offering this year. And sometimes it's worth shopping around because carriers or big box retailers still have discontinued variants like the excellent iPhone 12 Pro Max or iPhone 11 Pro. And there are a ton of trade-in and installment deals this year that you can use to help stretch your iPhone dollars just way further than ever. Now, when it comes to things like build quality and durability, the iPhone 13 Pros have shiny stainless steel bands and matte glass backs in silver, graphite, gold, and Sierra blue. All the other models have matte aluminum bands and shiny glass backs, but also bolder color options. The iPhone 13 comes in starlight, which is a slightly gold and silver, midnight, which is a slightly indigo black, teal blue, Hello Kitty pink, and deep, deep red. The iPhone 12s come in even more colors, lavender purple, navy blue, mint green, bright red, white, and black. All of those have ceramic shields, which is Apple's much better break resistant, don't call it glass fronts, and ion exchange glass backs, and are water resistant up to six meters for 30 minutes. The iPhone 11s come in a more pastel purple, slightly deeper green, black, white, and a middle red, ion exchange glass front and back and only two meters of water resistance for 30 minutes. The iPhone SE meanwhile, like the US agent only comes in red, white and black. Ion exchange glass front and back and only one meter of water resistance for 30 minutes. So if you want that premium look and feel, you'll have to stick with the iPhone 13 Pro. If durability and water resistance are just critical to you, you're gonna to wanna to stick with the iPhone 13 or the iPhone 12. The iPhone 13, iPhone 13 Pro, iPhone 12, and iPhone 11 all have 6.1 inch screens. If you want smaller, you'll have to go with the 5.4 inch iPhone 13 mini or iPhone 12 mini, or the non full screen 4.7 inch iPhone SE. Just be aware because of its classic design, the SE screen might be smaller than the minis, but physically the whole device is bigger. All the iPhones 13 and 12 have triple density OLED displays, which means wide color, high dynamic range and high contrast ratios for deep inky blacks, bright whites, and lots of detail in highlights and shadows. 
OLED has some issues with color shifting, smearing, and pulse width modulation, but they are absolutely terrific for movies, TV shows, photos, video games, just glorious. The iPhones 11 and SE have double density LCD displays. They're wide gamut, so you still get those rich reds and vibrant greens, but you don't get the same high dynamic range in contrast. Still, Apple uses really, really good LCD panels with excellent color calibration, so unless you really, really care about HDR or are holding them side by side with OLED, you may not recognize or even care about the differences. New this year, the iPhone 13 Pros will ramp up to 120 hertz for smoother scrolling in gaming, even ramp down to 48 hertz for movies and 10 hertz for books, it's a better, more natural experience, but also a way more efficient one for battery life. All the other iPhones are locked at 60 Hertz. So if you want high frame rate, you're gonna have to go with the iPhone 13 Pro. If you want OLED, you'll have to go with the 12 or 13. If you don't care or deliberately don't want OLED, the 11 or the SE. Okay, real talk. Pretty much any iPhone from the last few years will give you great photos and great video under ideal conditions like bright outdoor light. What the newer and more expensive iPhones will do is give you those great photos and videos under increasingly less ideal conditions, like indoor light at home, low light at a restaurant, or at night at a concert. They're also increasingly better at avoiding blurs on moving subjects, especially kids and pets. The iPhone SE only has a 26 millimeter wide angle camera, pretty much the same wide angle as the iPhone 11, but the iPhone 11 also has a 13 millimeter ultra wide angle camera, as do the iPhones 12 and 13. That lets you zoom out to capture way more of a scene, whether that's a room in your house, friends at a party, or buildings on a street. The iPhone 13 Pro also has autofocus on the ultra wide and a macro mode for extreme close up photos like flower petals, bugs, nail polish, or minifigs plus a third 77 millimeter telephoto camera that lets you zoom in up to 3X to capture scenes that are further away. It's phenomenal for portraits, but also kids at the park or playing sports or just sightseeing. The iPhone 11 and later have night mode for extreme low light and astrophotography, though the newer versions do it better. The iPhone 12 and later have Dolby Vision HDR for high dynamic range video. The 12 caps out at 4K 30, but the 13 can go to 4K 60. The iPhone 13 also has cinematic video for blurry bokeh backgrounds and rack focus, more like what you see on TV shows and movies. And if you're really next level, the iPhone 13 Pros have Pro Raw for photography and will soon be getting Pro Res for video, which just captures way more data and detail and gives you a ton more options in the edit, in post. And yeah, you'll know them if you need them. Pretty much the same story on the front facing selfie cams too. If you want all the nitty gritty details, I'll link to all my nitty gritty iPhone reviews in the description right below the like button. So if a photo or video is just a photo or video to you, you can get away with any of them, enjoy any of them. But if the iPhone is your only camera and you want the best possible photos and videos of your family, of your kids, of your pets, of your friends, you can get, then you'll want a 12 or 13. And if you want pro video, you're gonna need an iPhone 13 Pro. Now, all the current iPhones have Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11ax, no Wi-Fi 6E on any of them yet. They also have gigabit 4G LTE cellular networking, but only the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 13 have 5G NR networking all sub six, but also millimeter wave in the US. So if you need 5G, you'll need a 12 or a 13, which has even more bands in even more places. All of them, except for the iPhone SE, also have the U1 ultra wide band positioning chip, which is used for things like AirTags and Find My for precision location, and will be increasingly used for things like digital keys. So if you want any of that tech now or in the future, you're gonna have to go with anything but the SE. But the iPhone SE is the only one with good old fashioned Touch ID, Apple's fingerprint identity scanner, because it's the only one that still has a good old fashioned home button design. The iPhone 11, 12, and 13 all have Face ID, Apple's facial geometry scanner, because they have full screen notch designs. Face ID can be faster and feel way more transparent, but if you wear masks way more than gloves, Touch ID might still be just way more convenient. Not surprisingly, the bigger, heavier iPhones have way better battery life. Highly optimized video playback isn't a good or well-rounded in real life metric at all, but it gives a usable scale for comparison. iPhone SE and all mini have the worst battery life of any modern iPhones, 13 hours and 15 hours respectively. iPhone 13 mini comes in at 17 hours, same as the iPhone 11 and 12. iPhone 13 hits at 19 hours and the 13 Pro at 22 hours. The 13 Pro Max, a stupefying 28 hours. Sure, that's for hardware accelerated video, but 
divide by half and swirl around a bunch for average mixed workloads. Also, while all these iPhones can fast charge up to 50% in 30 minutes over a lightning cable with a 20 watt charger, sold separately, and they all have Qi standard inductive charging built right in. Only the iPhone 12 and iPhone 13 work with Apple's new MagSafe magnetic inductive charging system, and it's growing, if slowly, range of accessories. It means if you're okay with light use or more frequent charging, you'll be okay with an SE or mini, especially a 13 mini. If you want an iPhone that can go all day and well into the next day, then you'll really want the 13 Pro Max. All of Apple's chipsets these days might just seem various degrees of way overpowered, but they're designed to provide headroom for future versions of iOS and apps, like the A15 and the iPhone 13. You can look forward to around five to six years of updates with older versions like the A14 and the iPhone 12 and the A13 and the iPhone 11 and SE, a year or so less for each number less on the chip. So basically an iPhone 13 might take you to iOS 20 or beyond iPhone 12 to iOS 19, iPhone 11 and SE to iOS 18, give or take a version. In other words, you might save some money up front on a previous generation iPhone, but you also might be giving up some of the usability and updates over the life of that iPhone, especially if you tend to keep it for more than three years or even just hand it down or sell it. So you really, really wanna get the most iPhone you can for the least amount of money. So double check those trade-in offers and installment options and see if you can find a way to lower the upfront payment or just spread out any differences to where it's a much, much smaller amount every month. Also smash your phone bill in half and save that way with today's sponsor, Ting. Get talk and text for just 10 bucks a month, data plan starting at 15 and unlimited from 45. So whether you use two or 20 gigabytes a month, you can find the perfect plan on Ting for you and your family. And Ting works with all the iPhones, 13, 12, 11, SE, also Google's Pixel and Samsung's flips and folds, pretty much anything you can stick a SIM card in. And you can keep your existing number as well if you want to. Plus you get access to the best nationwide coverage in America, as well as Ting's award-winning customer service. Just go to renee.ting.com to check out the plans and see how much you can save, because it could be the difference between which iPhone you can afford to get. And because you're watching this video, you'll also get $25 off. Just click on the link below or go to renee.ting.com and get $25 off. Clicking that link really helps out the channel and so does hitting up the playlist for more, much more on the iPhone 13, 12, all the iPhones. Just hit it up and I'll see you in the next video.